722 right now. Welcome back. The House is expected to finalize and pass President Biden's COVID-19 relief bill today. It is expected to happen, though, without any Republican support. So what happened to bipartisanship in Washington? Joining us to talk about that and so much more this morning is Congressman Lloyd Smucker of Lancaster County. Congressman, good to see you again. Thank you for joining us good, on good Fox 40 you, Morning News. Let's start, Good to see you. Yeah, likewise. Uh, let's start with the COVID-19 relief bill. There have been some changes since it made its way through the Senate. Most notably, there's no minimum wage attachment now. Why do Republicans still have issue with the way the bill is expected to pass today? Well, a year ago, Matt, this bill may have made sense. We were just starting uh, to see the impact of COVID. We knew there would be a long-term impact. We didn't know exactly who the disease would target. And we did come together in a bipartisan way and pass the CARES Act and, in fact, passed five bills that helped those who really needed help due to this impact uh, and that uh, uh, funded Operation Warp Speed to allow us to do the vaccinations that we're doing right now. But we now see light at the end of the tunnel. And unfortunately, this is a, a bill with uh, un unprecedented uh, spending. In fact, Rico just said this is the greatest expansion of the welfare state since LBJ. This is $2 trillion at a time when we expect the impacts of the uh, pandemic to end with just within just a few months. And I'll tell you, for instance, the education spending in this, we must reopen our schools. Uh, the, the about close to 200, I think it's 180 billion in education spending uh, does not even require schools to open. And in fact, only about 5% of that gets spent in this school year. Uh, and in fact, about 9% of the bill total, only about 9% of the bill will be used to directly combat COVID. So this is a uh, huge uh, liberal wish list uh, included in this bill, uh, which just is not the right uh, thing to do at this time. That's why you're not seeing any Republican support. What is the Problem Solvers Caucus to someone who has never heard of it before? Yeah, so the problem solver, I came to Congress um, really thinking that we could work together in a bipartisan way. And I've been part of the problem solvers uh, caucus uh, leading in the past two sessions. Uh, and we were able to work together. But I tell you, it's different now. The Democrats have clearly shown uh, that they are not interested in working with Republicans. The president has shown that. Uh, Speaker Pelosi has shown that. Uh, and they need a check uh, to this uh, huge expansion of government that we're seeing right now. So my focus this year, frankly, uh, is to try to win back the House in two years. Uh, I'm a vice chair at the NRCC. Uh, I think that's a direction that the people in my district want us to go. They, they do not want to see this unbridled power that is being used with no bipart no interest in working with Republicans. Well, I, I wanted to talk a little bit more about bipartisanship because it is such a folk talk right now and the lack thereof. And I spoke with Senator Casey yesterday and asked him why bipartisanship appears to be dead in Congress. Uh, I wanted to play what he had to say. Uh, dark money has changed politics uh, irrevocably, I think. And, and if we're going to continue to have uh, dark money, which means it's undisclosed. If that person is going to be shrouded in secrecy and not the subject of rigorous disclosure, then we're never going to have the kind of uh, progress that we need to make on, on legislation. I'm not sure if you heard what he had to say because I know of, of Zoom issues on the other end, but he basically said dark money is the reason why bipartisanship uh, does not exist right now and, and that there's no checks and balances with dark money. I wanted to get your thoughts. Yeah, I could not hear what he said, but I can respond to your question. You know, Republicans uh, sh uh, showed over the last year during COVID that we could work together in a bipartisan way. And the previous administration worked with Republicans in the Senate uh, and Democrats in the House, as well as Republicans in the House, to pass much needed relief for the American people. The Democrats right now could be doing that. Bob Casey could be doing that. Speaker Pelosi could be doing that. Chuck Schumer could be doing that. I serve on the Ways and Means Committee. We had two, two full days of hearings on this bill during which Republicans introduced many common sense ideas that would have improved the bill. Democrats chose to ignore all of them, and they chose to ignore all bills that came forward on 
all committees and on the floor as well. So this is a choice that the the Democrats are making. They've they've chosen to go this path, and it, it does not have to be this way. And this is not good for the American people. So another bill that recently passed the House with no Republican support was H.R. 1, which is the massive uh, voting rights bill. And uh, we're going to put on the screen right now just some of what it includes uh, uh, for people who are unaware. Uh, what I'm wondering is Republicans since the election have said a lot of we are a big tent party of basically inviting everyone. Why is it, if that's the case, minorities and communities of color continue to say Republicans are making it tougher for us to vote? Well, you know, fortunately, we, the Republican is a big tent and we are a diverse party. In fact, uh, the American people responded to our message in this uh, election cycle. Uh, we've we turned 15 seats that have been held by Democrats to those held by Republicans now. Uh, and those, almost all of those candidates, in fact, every one of those candidates is either a woman, is either a person of color, or is a veteran. So, uh, you know, we know that the Republican Party represents a broad uh, range of people across I the country. I understand that. And I, I just say, I have to interrupt because you're not answering the question. What's the response to minorities and communities of color who say that Republicans are making it tougher for us to vote? Sure. Uh, well, you know, we, I think our democracy uh, is founded on the idea of a free and fair election. And we encourage everyone to get out to vote every year. And we want to ensure that everyone's voted is counted. Everyone's vote is counted properly. And everyone has confidence that their vote is counted uh, properly. That's a very, very important component of this, by the way. Our Republican uh, policies are making it tougher, is what I'm asking. Oh, no, certainly not. In fact, I introduced an amendment to this bill. There are problems with this bill, which I'd be happy to talk about, but I introduced an amendment to this bill called the Voter Confidence Act, which would have looked at what happened, some of the unconstitutional changes that were made in Pennsylvania and other states in the last election cycle, looked at how this was conducted, and looked how we could improve it. Uh, unfortunately, that amendment was turned down by Democrats, but it would have created a commission to look at that and then provide recommendations to the states on how they can improve their elections and encourage higher participation. Problems in this bill are, one, it would federalize elections. We don't mm -hmm. want to do that. States should control the elections. For instance, in my county, the election was conducted very well. I had constant communication with folks here in, in, in my district in, in Lancaster and York County. We want that to occur everywhere across the country, and we want to ensure that people are confident uh, in that. But we can't federalize elections. This actually would federalize campaigns. I think what a lot of people don't understand is in this bill is that for every dollar, every dollar under $200 uh, that is contributed to a candidate, there would be a match six to one from the federal government, thereby uh, uh, using taxpayer dollars to fund campaigns and probably maybe funding people you don't want to uh, support at I, all. So this bill is is a, is a, a bad mistake. We could do my, a good bill that would ensure we run a fair election but this isn't the way to do my it. My producers are in my ear telling me I have to wrap, but I'd be uh, irresponsible if I didn't ask you one final question in 15 seconds. Are you considering running for governor or Senate? Uh, I just was appointed to the Ways and Means Committee here. I'm the vice chair at the NRCC. I'm entirely focused on Republicans winning back the majority and making uh, Kevin McCarthy the Speaker of the House. All right, Congressman Lloyd Smucker of Lancaster County, thank you so much for joining us this morning on Fox 43's Capitol Beat. Thank you.